Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric. I hope you're having a great day today. We're talking about pH meters and I get a lot of emails from some of you who have been following the channel for some time who have a pH meter similar to this. This is one from a pair of instruments and questions I get asked most frequently are how to calibrate it and how to maintain it. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to calibrate the Apera Instruments pH meter, and it's actually very, very easy. We use this pH meter in a ton of different projects, everything from pools, aquariums, hydroponics, soil testing. We use it in home brewing like beer and wine. We use it to make salami cheese, kombucha, sauerkraut, fermented pickles and hot sauce, all the way down to sushi rice. And some of those projects you've seen on this channel, and some of them you'll probably never see. But this particular pH meter is incredibly accurate and super easy to use. And in order to maintain its accuracy, you have to calibrate it pretty frequently. So we're going to cover everything you need to know on how to calibrate the Apera Instruments pH meter. And you don't necessarily need this model because most Apera Instruments pH meters can be calibrated the same way. Be sure to stick around till the end of this video where I'm going to cover three critical things that you need to know when it comes to calibrating your pH meter so that you can get the most accurate results and so you don't damage your probe. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, let's get started. Now we're going to take this nice and easy and through this process, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So here's our Apera Instruments pH meter. Your kit is going to come with three calibration solutions and three empty vials. And the first thing we're going to do is place some of that calibration solution inside its corresponding vial. The reason we want to do that is to not contaminate our source solution. So just open the top and then very carefully pour in just enough calibration solution to where your probe is comfortably submerged. You don't need to fill them all the way. Once you've got enough solution in there, put the top back on it and place it in your kit. Okay, now that your standard buffers or your calibration solutions are in their appropriate vials, let's just take a minute to talk about each one of them. 7.0 is going to be your first, that's your neutral pH. You have an acidic buffer, which is your 4.0 pH, and then you're going to have your alkaline buffer, which is your 10.01. So a question I get quite often, how do I know which one to use when I'm calibrating? All right, so to understand which calibration solution you need, you need to understand what goes on when you calibrate your pH meter. And I'm gonna to try to oversimplify this entire process. And if at any point I lose you, just leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll try to answer your question as quick as I can. When you calibrate your pH meter, you're gonna create what they call points of calibration. And each point of calibration is going to extend the range of accuracy. Does that make sense? All right, let me give you an example. So when you begin the process of calibrating your unit, you're going to start with Buffer Solution 7.0. Matter of fact, your unit's actually going to prompt you to use Buffer Solution 7.0, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. But this is always going to be the very first one that you use. And when you're done calibrating your unit with this solution, you would have created a calibration point. And if you stop there, that's called a one point calibration, and your pH meter is going to be accurate around that 7.0 pH. Now, what if you want to extend the range of accuracy? Let's say to the more acidic side. Well, in that case, you're going to do a second point calibration with buffer solution 4.0. And by the time you finish calibrating with the 4.0, you would have created a second point calibration, in essence, extending the range of accuracy of your pH meter towards the acidic side. So what if you want to extend the range of accuracy towards the alkaline side? Let's say the samples that you test are high in pH. Well, you're going to start with the 7.0, and then you're going to do a second point calibration with the 10.01. And by the time you're done, you would have extended the range of accuracy towards the alkaline side. Okay, so as of right now, we've covered a couple different methods of calibration, depending on where you want your unit to be accurate, whether you want it to be more accurate on the acid side or on the alkaline side. But what if you want your unit to be accurate through the entire spectrum? Well, if you want that, you're going to do what they call a three point calibration. You're going to start with the seven, that's your first point. Your second point is going to be the four. And then the third point is going to be the 10. And when you calibrate with all three of these solutions, you in essence extend the range of accuracy from the acidic to the alkaline, allowing your pH meter to test any sample you have in front of it. But here's the question. 
is it necessary? Well, I'm going to leave that up to you, but I can tell you this. Most hobbyists who use pH meters are generally not going to check alkaline samples. These are samples where the pH might be between, let's say, 8 and 14. Even in soap making, where the pH is normally really high, I've never found the need to test for pH. But if you're involved in projects like charcuterie, cheese making, wine and beer making, if you're into fermentation like sauerkraut, kombucha, pickles, uh, peppers, if you do any type of gardening where you need to test the soil or even hydroponics, your pH range is generally going to be a lot lower. So let's say anywhere between four, three to seven, somewhere in that range. So if those are the types of projects that you are involved in, truth be told, you only need to do a two point calibration using the seven buffer solution and the four buffer solution, and that's it. It's really not necessary to do the 10 buffer solution, especially if you're not gonna be testing samples that are alkaline. But this unit does give you that option if you want to go ahead and do uh, a three point calibration so that your unit can test whatever you want. Okay, so with that being said, let me show you how to calibrate your unit manually. And if you have the Apparel Instruments Zentest models that utilize the phone app, I'm also gonna show you how to calibrate your unit using the phone app, which is super cool and super fast. Let's do it. Okay, when I start calibrating, this is generally what my setup looks like. I've got my pH buffers and my kit. I've also got a small container of distilled water and some delicate task wipes. These are from Chemtech, great for your pH meter, uh, glasses, other things like that. I've also transitioned from the vials to something called a calibration pod or a cow pod, which is just basically a more sturdier, stable version of the vials. It'll actually hold the unit, so it's kind of a hands-free version, and you'll see that here in a minute. So what you're about to see is exactly what I go through every time I calibrate my pH meter. I would suggest you do the same. It's a good practice. We're gonna start by removing the cap, and because there's electrode solution in there, we're just gonna make sure that we put it somewhere where it doesn't spill, In the kit is a perfect place. Now all we gotta do is rinse that tip off. We don't want to contaminate our calibration samples. So we rinse it in distilled water and then blot it dry with one of those delicate task wipes. If you don't have a delicate task wipe, you could also do this and shake it dry. Just make sure you don't break the probe and accidentally hit it on something. Let's turn the unit on by short pressing the power button. That's the first button on the top. Once the unit's been powered on, we're gonna get into calibration mode by long pressing the calibration button. That's the last button on the control panel. So we're gonna hold it for a couple of seconds. The screen's gonna turn green, indicating that we're in calibration mode. And notice that there's a 7.00 flashing on the screen. That's your unit prompting you to stick that pH meter in the 7.00 buffering solution. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna dip that into the solution, give it a little swirl, and allow it to start reading that particular pH buffer. As soon as your reading is stable, and that's indicated by a little smiley face that shows up on your screen, you can go ahead and proceed to the next step by short pressing the calibration button. That's just a quick press. Your screen's gonna flash, the light's gonna turn off, and you've just completed the first point of calibration. Easy, right? So all we gotta do now is rinse off our probe, blot it dry, or shake it dry. Once you're done, if you take a peek at the screen, you'll notice a little M with a circle around it. That lets you know that the first point of calibration has been complete. Now it's time to do a second point of calibration. So all we're gonna do is enter in the calibration mode again by long pressing the calibration button. Hold it for three seconds and your screen's gonna turn green. Now notice the numbers flashing. They're gonna be a little different this time. This particular pH meter can read up to five different pH buffers. And so what it's doing is giving you options as to where to go from here. Now in our case, we want our unit to be more accurate towards the acidic side, and we have that 4.00 pH buffer. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick it in that 4.00 pH buffer, give it a little swirl, and wait for the smiley face. Now that we've got our smiley face, short press the calibration button, the screen's gonna flash, the green light's gonna turn off, and we've now completed a second point of calibration. So once again, rinse your probe off in distilled water, blot it dry or shake it dry, and if you just wanna confirm it, look at the screen, and you're now gonna notice the M with a circle and an L with a circle. And that lets you know you now have two points of calibration. Now, because I typically only test lower pH samples, this is generally where I stop. But I'm gonna show you how to do a third point of calibration so that your unit can be accurate through the entire spectrum. So we're gonna go ahead and enter 
calibration mode once again by long pressing the calibration button. Notice the numbers flashing, 10.01 and 12.45. Those are the only two options left. I'm gonna stick it in the 10.01 solution, give it a little swirl and wait for the smiley face. Our reading is stable. Let's short press the calibration button. Our screen's gonna flash, green light's gonna turn off, and we've now completed a three point calibration. All that's left to do is rinse off the probe, blot it dry, or shake it dry. If you look at your screen now, you're gonna notice the L, the M, and the new H with a circle around it, letting you know you have a three point calibration. So your unit can now accurately test samples in the acidic or the alkaline department. So that's how you calibrate your pair instruments pH meter. Let me now show you how to calibrate it if you have the Zen test model utilizing the phone app. So let me go ahead and just activate the phone app on my phone, pull it up here on the screen and press the menu button. We're now gonna select the calibration option and immediately our screen is gonna turn green just as if we were doing it manually. And notice that on my app, it's prompting me to stick it in the 7.00 solution. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Give it a little swirl and wait for the smiley face. Now this is actually very quick. I'm gonna show you this pretty much real time. There's the smiley face. We click the enter button and it's now calibrated to the first point. So we're gonna take it out, rinse it, and then blot it dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click the menu option again, top left hand corner, and go ahead and select the calibration option. My screen turns green and I'm gonna stick this in the 4.0 calibration solution. Now this is typically what I do. Now normally I'm only using a two point calibration because I want my unit to be accurate towards the acidic side. So I'll wait for the smiley face, and there it is. Click the enter button, and now we're done. And I wanna say the entire process didn't take but about 60 seconds. On the app, you can see where the different calibration points are registered, and you can also see on the app only the slope of your pH meter, which is an absolutely critical piece of information in determining whether your meter's probe is still good. And we'll cover that in a future video on how to maintain your pH meter. Okay, so that's how you calibrate the Apera Instruments pH meter, and thanks for sticking around to the very end because now you're about to get the good stuff. Let's talk about the three most critical things that you need to know when calibrating your unit. Number one, when you start the calibration process, you wanna complete it. Whether you're doing a one point, a two point, or a three point calibration on your unit, you wanna make sure that you completely finish it you don't wanna turn your unit off in the middle of calibration, okay? So once that light turns green, stick it in the appropriate solution, wait till it's finished, and then you can move forward. Number two, how often should you be calibrating your pH meter? And that's a great question. So the answer I'm gonna give you, super simple, very easy to remember, because let's face it, most hobbyists are not using their pH meter every single day. So my advice to you when it comes to calibrating your pH meter is to calibrate it every time you use it. There is no harm in calibrating it that often and you're guaranteed accurate results. And you don't have to remember when you did it last. So every time you pull it out, calibrate that bad boy and you're good to go. The process only takes like 60 seconds. Okay, number three, when should you throw out the pH buffer solutions? And that's a particular issue that most people don't even think about. Most people throw out their pH buffer solutions when they either get contaminated or they expire. But the accuracy of your pH meter is completely dependent on a couple different variables. And one of those variables is the freshness of your pH buffer solution. Every buffer solution has a shelf life. And I'm not talking about the expiration date, that comes on the original bottle. I'm talking about the moment where you physically pour the pH buffer solution either in the vial or in the Calpod and you start calibrating it. At that point, once it's in here, it starts to break down. And over time, it's not gonna give you a very accurate reading. So that's the question. How often should you be changing your calibration liquid out so you can get the most accurate results? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, so the pH buffer 7.00 is the most stable. And when it comes to this one, you wanna change the solution after every fifth use, unless you're only using your pH meter once a month. If that's the case, you wanna use fresh solution every time you use your pH meter. But if you're like me and you're using your pH meter three or four times a week, then after every fifth use, right here, you wanna to toss the old liquid out, put in the new liquid. It's gonna keep your results super accurate. Here we go. Okay, and when it comes to the pH buffers 4.0 and 10.01, these two aren't nearly as stable and they tend to break down a lot faster. So my advice to you would be after every two to three uses of either one of these, toss out the old solution, 
refill it with fresh solution and you're gonna get the most accurate results. Now, once again, if you're only pulling your meter out once a month, you're gonna to wanna to put fresh solutions across the board every time you calibrate. So you might wanna consider getting some refill bottles. You can get eight ounce bottles or you can get you know 16 ounce bottles. Really depends on how you use your pH meter. Um, because I typically only test acidic environments, the only two refills that I got are the four and the seven. I don't need the 10, so there you go. Um, I hope that helps. I hope that answered all your questions when it comes to calibrating the Apparel Instruments pH meter. But if you do happen to have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you found this video to be helpful or entertaining in any way, a thumbs up would be nice. And if you're new to our channel, we'd like to say welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment and a thumbs up, and check out some of our other projects. We've got a lot of stuff on the horizon. Get ready, because we're just getting started. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.